Hey guys, uh, this video is going to be about how I got into UF uh, and also like some a couple application tips like scattered here and there, um, not too many but just a couple. Um, so yeah, I am also explaining, I also got into uh, University of Central Florida, uh, Florida State, I got into University of Alabama, um, University of Georgia, Penn State in University of South Carolina. Uh, so yeah, obviously I ended up here at UF. So yeah, also on top of that, so a little bit more specifics. UCF, I didn't apply to anything else. I didn't think I was gonna go there. Um, Bama, I didn't apply for anything else. Um, Georgia, at first I got deferred because I applied early action. Um, but then, so I got deferred early action and then accepted in March. Uh, Florida State, I applied honors, didn't get in, but I did get a small scholarship that made it pretty equal to going to UF. Uh, and then um, South Carolina, I got honors. I got an in-state tuition reduction and yeah, that was it which was insane. That was pretty comparable to U <clears throat> to UF as well. Just dorms were a little more expensive. So that was also taken into account. Uh, and then for Penn State, I didn't apply honors. I didn't apply like anything else. Didn't get any scholarship money. Um, yeah, so that's just general information. And I'm gonna start talking and explaining everything now. So it's funny, I haven't taken an ACT since October 2020, yet here's, I, I can see my scores right now. So yeah, I'm just gonna like read them off, I guess. I don't know what else to do. So um, my super score was a 33 composite with um, a 31 math, 32 science, 34 English, and 35 reading, um, and then a 10 on the writing, but the writing doesn't matter. So that's basically what everyone looked at, like all the colleges looked at, because they don't really care about your individual scores. They'll all just like super score it. But I know some schools won't, um, just all the ones that I applied to did. But for my most recent one anyway, I literally got those exact same scores. I took one in October 2020 and I got all those scores. So super score doesn't really matter to me anyway. Um, and then July 2020, uh, I got a 31. Uh, with a 27 math, 30 science, 32 English, and 34 reading. So I think you can kind of tell, like, what I'm good at. Uh, and then the first time I took it, in February of 2020, I got a 29. Uh, and then I got a 27 on math and science, a 34 in English, a 28 on reading, and then the 10 on writing. So, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I took it three times. I feel like I probably could have taken it more if it weren't for COVID. That kind of impacted my um test taking and i feel like if i had studied a lot for it i probably would have done better but all three of those times i took it with like minimal preparation i just like did it um because i wasn't really applying to any schools that needed anything higher than that score so i wasn't really concerned about trying again so yeah that's that uh, i did not submit any of my sat scores because they weren't good enough so yeah as far as my grades go and my transcript, um, I took 10 total APs. I took one my sophomore year, four my junior year, and five my senior year. Uh, I'll probably like list them somewhere here because I don't really want to go through all exactly what I took and everything. Um, I did not send any of my scores until after I got in to UF because <laughs> it was not going to help me, let me tell you that. I only passed four of my 10 exams, so that really didn't help me out too much, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, so as far as like rigor of class goes, uh, my freshman year I took like mostly honors. I think the only standard class I took was Spanish, because I had to, and then I had to take a religion class and then an elective that was also a standard credit. Uh, sophomore year, I'm pretty sure it was the exact same thing, like I only took standard in Spanish, in elective, and religion, and I t added on AP World History. And then my junior year, I took 
standard yeah I took standard Spanish um honors math uh I took a yearbook elective which was a standard course correlation I took a dual enrollment class and then the rest was AP uh so four APs and then my senior year I took five APs a dual enrollment course and then a standard um yeah, standard elective and in honors Spanish. So as far as my grades go, I got um, A's in almost everything, except for like my math and science classes. Like um, I got an A in algebra two and an A in statistics, uh, AP, but I got B's in calc and pre-calc. And then for science, I got B's in, um, environmental in chem and AP chem um barely squeaked by with an A in bio that almost didn't happen um and then I also got a B in world history I'm trying to remember if there's anything else but I really don't think there was I think I'm pretty sure that it was that just that there's a no I definitely got an A in U.S. history Maybe. Actually, I could have gotten a B in one semester of U.S. history. But yeah, COVID also really saved my grades because I almost got a C in calc. But because of COVID, I was able to average it and make it a B. So <laughs> we really love that in that instance. Uh, another thing that is really important for applications is your extracurriculars. I would argue that this and like leadership positions are probably the most important thing that you could ever have like on your application and some of the things I thought were really like working for me something that really like helped me get in where I got in uh was things that just kind of set me apart from other people in my school so a lot of the things I did were not actually through my school so like for example that's kind of confusing but for example I was on a crew team the team was not through my high school it was through like a local club team so there were only a handful of people in my school that could say they were on a like a rowing team and not everyone that was on the team applied to UF I think it was just me and one other kid so from that like perspective they only see two people from my class that say oh I was on the rowing team so it's something that sets you apart from everyone else um I also got my gold award in Girl Scouts and there were only two or three people also in my grade that did that so something like that also sets you apart uh, something I noticed with a lot of other people was the things that they listed were all just like the same like three or four clubs that my school had and while they were all like really good school like sorry really good clubs every every single person that was applying to these schools all had these too and they all had the exact same like involvement in it so it didn't really set them apart from anyone else so something I think that if you are in this in, like in this case where the only things you have on your application are these like same four clubs as everyone else I would try to apply for these leadership positions. For example, one of them would be like one of the honor societies. So I was in like a whole bunch of them, same thing with like half my grade, like they weren't very hard to get into. But for one of them, I was historian. And that tied in really well to what I wanted to do because the historian was the one that like photographed it, like made, like kept all the memories and like um, made sure like, I'm not 100%, words are not coming to my brain right now, but their job was like to keep the history and so part of my job was taking photos which tied in really well to what I did on yearbook um which also tied in pretty well to my major which is PR so that's also something I would try to like think about when you're like building your application is how does every single thing that I've done tie in somehow to my major or my interests or something that I enjoy it doesn't have to every single time have to be like that because sometimes you just want to do something because it's fun and I think the colleges do know that and they understand that they're not going to be like oh my god you were in like a sewing club and that has nothing to do with like you wanting to be like I don't know like a psychologist like sure maybe it doesn't but it shows that you have like interest in something and you would be willing to like join clubs in the school so something like that is what like the colleges want to see Something that just like sets you apart from all the other people that are applying from your school because you are getting compared to other people in your school that have also applied there. 
if you know what I mean by that. Um, it's not as much compared with like other people because people's like grading skills are very different and like involvement is very different. Like for example, my school didn't have like a student government. We didn't have a newspaper. We didn't have a lot of like things that look really good on applications. So they shouldn't like colleges shouldn't look at me negatively because I wasn't on the newspaper. I did what my school's equivalent of the newspaper was. I was on the yearbook staff and that was the best I could do in any sort of PR, journalism, anything like that. That was the most I could do. So they rec like the colleges recognize that and they say, oh, like, that makes sense. Like you tried, you did everything you could. You took like heavy English classes. You did well in English classes. You like, they didn't know that I passed the AP exams for English, but it all like my ACT scores for English were very high. So they see how all of this checks out and then it all makes sense. If you kind of get what I'm saying there. I think like definitely having this like holistic application that connects together with everything is one of the best tips I can give. Make sure that everything, or at least most of the things, have some sort of connection to each other. So yeah, that's kind of like a big tip that I have there. If I want to dive in more deep into what I had on my application for um, like extracurriculars, for leadership involvement, for things like that, uh, I'm gonna have to remember this correctly because it was a full, like, it was a while ago that I was filling out these applications. It's almost been two years at this point, almost two years, not quite two years, but almost two years. So if I remember correctly, I, so I put all my schooling on there, like all my education, stuff like that. I put that I was athletic editor for the yearbook for one year, which at my school was like the second highest position you could get. Um, I was a reporter for one year, so I put that on there as well, because um, that shows that I'm, I can like communicate, I can write, I can produce interviews, I can do stuff like that. Uh, I put online that I was in, gosh, I can't remember how many honor societies I was in, but I'll list off as many as I can. I was in National Honor Society, I was in English, I was in Social Studies, and in Social Studies I had a leadership position, I was historian. Uh, I was in science, which didn't really make sense, but I did it anyway. I was in Spanish. I was in the Yearbook Honor Society, which I didn't even know was a thing, but it is. Um, and I also had a leadership position in that one. We didn't have names for it, but I was just like, exec, I guess is what you could call it. Um, I think that was it for Honor Societies. And then for like other involvement, I was on my crew team, I was on varsity for one year, um, and then novice for a year and a half because of like odd circumstances that I actually explained in my essay. Um, and then I was involved in my school's leadership team, which we like, this was like kind of like a padding your resume type thing, but I still did a lot for it. So I was able to like talk about it a lot, but we basically conducted interviews not in a re we did um tours of the, that's what i meant to say we like conducted tours of the campus we like were involved in freshman orientation we did um lots of different like events like we helped to plan them so that was also something that tied in really well in my major because it showed that i could do event planning i can like sh like showcase a school to like prospective students i can um get like freshmen really excited about being on campus like stuff like that that's something that, again, ties in well. And then what else did I do in high school? I mentioned Girl Scouts. I was a gold award recipient. I was a national delegate, which was like a big thing. There's only like five people from the entire like county or not even county, like I'm pretty sure, I'm not hundred percent sure. Don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure it was just five people from like the central like Florida that were picked. So, yeah, that was kind of cool. And then, um, I don't know what else I said about that one, but that one was kind of it. And then I was also involved with like this other like uh, organization where we created like service projects and like groups. And we actually won, um, world, not worlds, we won overall. And like we got to go to like a world competition, but then it got canceled because of COVID, which was really upsetting. But yeah, we just like made a bunch of service projects for like our local community and like we had to use like 
resources um like recycled materials like stuff like that to like better our community so something like that um doing anything that like shows that you give back to your community shows any sort of like community service is also like really good as long as you have some sort of like passion or creativity tied to it something that isn't just like oh i did a beach cleanup or oh i like I don't know, prepared meals on Thanksgiving, like, those aren't specifically, aren't things that, like, set you apart, but something that's, like, a long-term service project that you spend a lot of time, or you do, like, very often, that's something that will set you apart. For, so, like, for guys, it'd be, like, your eagle project if you're a Boy Scout, um, something like that. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of, like, what other parts, of, oh, I can talk about the essay next, I guess. So, at least for a lot of the schools I applied to, the essay was really important. Um, so there's a lot of different types of essays, and I didn't really understand this fully until, like, after I was, like, going through all of my applications. But essays are a lot. They're very overwhelming, and it's very easy to fall behind when it comes to, like, writing your essay and turning it in. So, yeah. Sorry. Anyways, so there's something called the Common App Essay, and I know there's something different too for California, but I didn't apply to any California schools, so I can't exactly speak on that, but if you know more about them, you can comment down below too. Um, so basically, when I wrote my Common App Essay, I thought that was like it, but each school also can have their own supplemental essays that they ask for that you like write also, so that was kind of something I wasn't expecting. But anyway, so the Common App essay is, like, the prompts are always, or I think they're mostly the same every year. So you're given, like, a whole list of prompts, and you can, like, pick one. And I don't remember exactly which one I picked, but I think it had something to do with, like, how you overcame a struggle or something like that. Or, like, something about adapting, because I wrote about rowing, because I joined, uh, like, halfway through a season. And they were, like, preparing to go to States, and I was like, I don't know how to do this. Like, I don't know how to row like who do you think I am so I wrote about that and like learning how to like grow as a person and I I'd never mentioned COVID in mine because like there was really no point to doing that because I felt like everyone that year was going to talk about COVID in some way but I mentioned how like the seasons like how it was all like gearing up towards like this end and how much I grew like throughout the year because rowing is a year-round sport so I talked about how like I dedicated so much of my time to this sport to see like amazing results so that's what I talked about and I kind of based it off of like the you know the nursery rhyme like row 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 your boat gently down the stream like I kind of poked fun at that throughout my essay so I think it like it definitely made it like more relatable because some people have no idea what rowing is about but I'm able to tie it back to this nursery rhyme so people are like oh that's kind of funny like cool um i get it so yeah that's kind of the one essay the common app essay but each school could also have like their own supplemental ones and then if you're applying for any specific programs they could also have different essays so i oh my god i wrote so many essays i wrote so let me think. I don't remember exactly how many, but I think I wrote two for UCF. They were short. I wrote one for UF for innovation, which was just about like, like, what do you want? Like, what, what excites you about the program? Or like, why are you interested in this program? I wrote a whole, I think I wrote four, maybe three for honors. I didn't get into honors, but I just applied. Um, I wrote one for Georgia. I wrote a bunch for South Carolina because I applied honors and I did get in. Um, I didn't write any for Bama. I don't even think I... I didn't need my common app for Bama either. Um, I think I wrote one or two for Penn State. And then I wrote a whole bunch for FSU because I also applied honors there. Um, I think that's it. Maybe. Yeah, that was it. So, yeah, essays are crazy and they can get very overwhelming very fast. So, 
yeah I honestly like wish I could go back and like read well no I wouldn't want to go back but like I wish I could have told myself been like hey don't procrastinate the essays uh what other parts of applications I can't really speak too much on letters of recommendation because even though I needed them it didn't really like impact much like I just emailed my high school teachers and was like hey can you write this and then that was the end of it um yeah I only needed like two I didn't apply to any schools that needed like a ton or anything like that but uh what else is there I think that might be it so yeah I for everyone applying to college if you're looking at this video to like decide and like I'm oh, sorry so I hope you guys got at least a little bit of information out of this video whether you're applying to colleges like right now if you're planning to apply in like the next couple of years or maybe you're just not even applying to college at all and you're just watching this video which hi um how are you doing uh anyways um I hope you at least got some sort of information from this some sort of like clarity over college applications I know this wasn't the most informational video but I kind of just like summed everything up like generally and advice that I wish I could have heard or like things were explained better to me than when I heard them when I was applying so yeah good luck to everyone that's applying I hope you get in everywhere you want to go um yep all right so I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this video if you did leave a like comment down below uh, you should subscribe if you want to see more if you have any questions about like college applications you can ask them in the comments and i'll try to get to answering them if i know how uh if i don't i could probably refer you to something that does um yeah that's it um look forward to a bunch of fun content this fall because there's going to be some crazy things going on. Um, yep. Bye.